so druid. We're gonna make a really simple application with druid just to get you to like understand how this thing works because honestly once you understand what druid means when it says data oriented rust ui design toolkit even though that sounds complicated it's really simple once you understand that it's, it's like such a simple framework it's that framework that's nice to work with so the first place you probably want to look at is going to be the 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 druid uh github page also the docs rs which is going to be nice i'm it's going to be kind of outdated because i'm not using the 0 0.7 version because that was updated two years ago okay um yeah so we're gonna start making our simple application let's open up a terminal or your favorite id does not matter and let's make a new uh let's make a new application so cargo new uh, let's call it learn druid because you're a learning druid wow and go into it first off we need to edit our cargo.toml we're gonna add the not the 0 0.7 version we're gonna add it directly the, the one that gets directly from git oh not this correct one there you go and cargo build so that it builds all of our dependencies this is going to take a little bit because it, uh, it is just kind of compiling. Compiling? It's compiling like the, the GTK crate right now, which takes a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now we can go into our main. Oh, I'm using CD. Okay. Uh, now we can go into our main.rs. And Rust really works on three things, right? So there are three things in Rust that. Three things in Rust? In uh, Druid that really matter. So our first one is going to be some sort of data, right? Then we're going to have um, our UI builder like these are like the three steps right so you have your data you have your ui builder and then you have your main function right so first we want to get done with this data uh you can use any type as data that's easily clonable um it's nicer however to use a struct because you probably don't want to just use like a u32 so we're going to make a struct uh let's call it funny data and let's make a num. There we go. So this is our funny data. We have to derive some things, however. Because, yeah, we need to derive clone. And we need to derive data. Right? We have to import data as well. Okay, now we've imported data. I'm just going to move this down below the imports. That way it looks nicer. There we go. So now we've derived data. So now this can be used. Data just kind of makes it able to be used inside of our uh, Druid application. And now we want our uh, UI builder function. Uh, UI builder. This takes in nothing, although you can make it take in something. I've done that before. Um, and this will always give us back implementing uh, implement a widget and the generic is going to be funny data because that's the data type we want to use for our application there we go so right now we want our application to be kind of labeled out like you know we have our counter and it just shows us our like blank number and then we're going to have like a plus button and a minus button right so first off, we need to make a label. So let's make a label. And this is a little bit confusing when you get into it. Um, usually, you can just look at, you know, the docs or like the examples to understand what's happening. It's kind of over uh, over here. 
it's this this closure and this closure is just something that becomes a string in the back but it allows you to make something interactive so we're gonna have our data right our data is gonna be of type funny data you got it right wow amazing okay so our funny data is what we're gonna take in and we're also gonna take in this uh, environment uh, over here it does say just underscore env that usually gives me errors so I'm gonna just do underscore colon and n that way it plays nicely that might be because I'm not using a u32 I don't know and we can just just take a format format counter and we can just use our data dot none right it's gonna ask us to uh, to stop being angry at us we need to just import widget and environment it's angry at us again because we aren't actually returning anything that's fine we'll do that in a bit now we have to do let's make two buttons let's call this increment right and this is gonna be a new button uh, new and let's just make this plus and let's make this one minus and we kind of want to run this now but right now we're not like returning anything so we're gonna make a uh, flex box and when when you return you're just returning one widget so you can use something like a flex or like a z stack or something like different types of widget that can have multiple widgets as children and then you just return that so you kind of like build out your ui like this using like this builder pattern right um so you want to do with child oh that's wacky why did it okay that's fine um <laughs> with child you want to do a label oh that's why i see uh, i see what we did so <laughs> let's do this flex again so flex we need to make it a different so a type so i'm going to use a column Uh, with child and let's just put our label in there okay, that's fine and then we're gonna do another with child right so we're gonna have another child and we're gonna have this as a flex row so we're gonna have two buttons underneath hopefully if I know my flex if I know row and column well enough um, you're gonna do with child it's gonna be your increment button increment and this CIW, this has to be decrement. Why is that being mean to me? But new minus cargo build. In interesting, why? Wait, what? They're giving decrement a explicit type. Why don't I have to do that for increment? Load up. We do that. CD minus button. Okay, it's just it's just being mean to me at this point. Okay, that's. Thank you for doing that. Oh, I see why. Okay. Um, because we don't have it here. Uh, with child decrement okay there we go yeah Russ couldn't infer what type this was but now it can because we have it over here so this is our UI and what we need to do is in our main function we need our window descriptor and then we need that's lucky okay so we need our window descriptor and now we need and then we need to like actually launch our app launch to the stars so let's make our uh, main window equal win I did not do the equal sign okay window descriptor and then new was it new yeah new and then all we have to do is pass in our function there we go and yeah that's it we have our window descriptor. Then we need to do app app launcher. 
Uh, what does it say here? Let's see. App launcher with window. We use our main window. And then we do log to console just to get some sort of debug information back. And then we use launch. And we need to put our data in here. We don't have our data like written out anymore. So we're just going to make a new funny data. And in here, we're just going to use zero because that's what we want, right? And that shouldn't give me an error. Cargo build. Oh, hold up. Uh, to unwrap because this might return us an error. And we should be able to cargo run instead. Why not? So right now, we're going to get a window. It's not going to be interactive because these buttons don't do anything. So we're going to have to make those buttons do something. So let's close the app. Let's go over here. Dot on click is the method you're looking for. On click. This just takes in a closure, which takes in our context, which doesn't really matter. Just you need it there. You need your data, which is going to be an immutable, funny data. And then we're, oh, that's, that should be, oh, there we go. And then we need our environment, which doesn't matter, just like the context. Okay. And now, with our funny data, we can take our data, data.num, and we can just plus equal one. And for the decrement, uh, there we go. And now we have our decrement, make this minus equal one. And this should just work. And that's kind of the beauty of Druid. You have your data, your entire application is structured around your data. And okay, so that's that's an error. Uh, that error is coming because we have our num as a U32. But this is a document button we want below zero. So what we want to do, I32. That's it. Okay, <laughs> as I was saying before, the beauty of Druid is we can just make an app that centers around our data and just interact, like just updates every time we interact with it. It's really nice. It just works. If you want to add like some sort of a title, you add that to your window descriptor. So let's name this funny window. Funny window. Look at that, we have our funny window. And it's gonna show up here. And it just all works. It's super simple, it's super small, you don't need that much uh to like actually make these applications. And it's really powerful with like all the different options you can have. So just have fun. Uh if you wanna know how to do something, don't know how to do it, there is the the best place to go is to go to Druid click the Druid folder, go into examples. All of these examples is kind of how I learn because it's like really self-explanatory. All of them, one file, really simple. You have how to do animations, async events, blocking functions. Like how you handle blocking functions. Async event is kind of not really async. There's no async uh, functions. It's just a different thread. Um, you have your, you have uh, cursor icons. You have custom widgets, which is kind of important if you want to do stuff. It's not that hard to make a custom widget. You have like all the stuff like web, uh, lists, markdown, multiple windows, panels, you know, stuff like view switcher, transparency, timer, text box, like all of these things, images widget galleries, all, all of this stuff like ZStack is on here. You just look at your, look at the examples, go through them. If you don't know how to do something, it's probably gonna be in examples. Go through the docs, it's really helpful. Have LSP, really helpful. And yeah, enjoy making apps.